and welcome again everybody. I'm Justin Kennington with the SDVOE Alliance. Uh, today I'm joined by Tavis Sparrow, the technical business manager from Icron, uh, who I hope you know as, as the folks that do USB, and boy do they. Tavis, <laughs> welcome. Thanks, Justin. Thanks for joining us. Um, I, I think since we're here in the SDVOE booth and we're talking about SDVOE and its interaction with USB and, and with Icron, let me lay a little groundwork and then I want to hear about how Icron comes in. Um, SDVOE products that feature USB connectivity, actually there's, there's two different flavors in our world, right? As you know, one flavor um, is the sort of lowest, lowest point cost of entry base level solution that offers, it's called USB HID support, right? That means you can plug in a keyboard, you can plug in a mouse, and you can transmit that across the network, uh, but that's it. Um, however, Icron, who's one of the contributing members of our alliance, uh, offers, offers a chipset that's, that's included in many of these products that gives a much higher end, a higher performing solution. Right. Why, don't, why don't you take over and tell us what that looks like? Yeah, so we have a, a little device that's a companion device with everything else on the SDVOE board, and we add transparent USB and to let's, let's be clear for the audience, when we say device, we're talking about chips on the circuit board inside the box. This inside is still box. one box with video with USB right there next to each right. other. Right, it's all included in, in, in the node, in the encoder or decoder. Uh, and we present it to the user as a, just a USB connector, of course. Mm -hmm. But what we can accommodate is uh, a transparent extension function. So you can plug in a thumb drive, a camera, a DSP, uh, USB uh, DSP, and just to add a little more flexibility. So if you have applications where you're in collaboration rooms and you need to extend cameras around the, the, the venue, we offer that extra little component, that add-on right. into, into the ecosystem. Right, and so, so in an SDVOE device that's using the Icron chip, uh, for USB 2 transport, I, and I know the answer to this question, I just like to hear it. Um, USB 2 might transmit up to 480 megabits per second. Correct. Um, when I do this with SDVOE and Icron, am I going to be limited to something different than that? No. No. So, <laughs> oh, that's what I wanted to hear. So you guys have uh, some, some very carefully managed bandwidth, yeah. and, uh, and you've given us a little slice for what we need to do in the USB 2 space, so that's, yeah, it's, it's wide open. Right. So the net result is, uh, you call it transparent, I think that's the perfect word. Yeah. It, it, even, I'm going to say this, and I think I'm not wrong, when I connect a device through the SDVOE network and I'm looking at it on my PC, as far as the PC is concerned, that device has just been plugged into the computer. Yep. Uh, and it's and it's just another peripheral on the system. Exactly. And it functions that way too, which is what's so powerful about it. What gives it that flexibility? Yeah, absolutely. Right? You list it off. Oh, thumb drives, DSPs, cameras, headsets, right? But what if next year somebody invents a new kind of USB device? Well, guess what? That's that's going to work too. It's all built with in. no no upgrades or drivers or anything on our end. Yeah. That's great. Um, our focus just now has been talking USB two, of course. We hear about USB 3, and uh, I've heard yeah. about USB 4. I don't know if that's a real product thing yet, but what's still the value of USB 2 in a, in a, in a world where USB 3 is the talk of the town? Yeah, I mean, with, in the UCC space in particular, uh, if you're buying cameras and deploying new cameras, it's pretty much USB 3 across the board, at least okay. from, a, from, a, from a marketing and, and a brochure level. Uh, you have this USB camera, has a USB 3 port on it, maybe even Type-C on it. And so immediately, people who are trying to integrate these systems together say, okay, now I need to go from USB 2 extension to USB 3 extension, clearly. Um, and the problem is that we run out of bandwidth quickly. <laughs> to do all the magical stuff in, in the SDVOE ecosystem, we just can't ask for twice the bandwidth all of a sudden to accommodate USB 3. But um, it's, not, it's, it's not bad news. Um, you can run USB 3 products in a USB 2 fallback mode, if you will. There's, there's going to be backwards compatibility uh, out of the box. And uh, the neat thing about a lot of those camera sources is, um, yeah, there are a handful of USB 3 cameras that can output 4K resolution right out of that port. But actually, a lot of the products on the market, um, people are consuming that that visual experience as USB 2 traffic anyways, either by virtue of um, uh, them supplying a, a, a very long cable in the kit. And so okay. the consumer might say, that's a remarkably long USB 3 cable. Well, it's not USB 3. They, okay. have, they have built a USB 2 cable, which operates the camera in USB 2 mode to get extra distance. And so somewhere the cable. system recognizes this and and, and downgrades the camera to a USB 2 exactly. speed. Yeah. So they could already be doing this USB 2 thing anyway, so yeah. extending USB 2 and that d directly applies. Um, 
the other thing too, and this is where, you know, as, as, as designers or, or people who are specifying equipment, you might want to get into the documentation a little bit because um, maybe it isn't about USB 3.0. Maybe it's like, I have uh, purchased a 4K camera, a 6K camera. They may be talking about the image sensor inside it and nothing more. Yeah. And the value in that is typically cameras that are smart cameras that do uh, automatic framing, uh, people tracking, yeah, okay. um, and digital pan and zoom. They'll use this big, big sensor in there, but only output maybe 1080p. So if you can kind of overlay that, you have this little window of 1080p that can move around this large image sensor, and you get these very um, elegant outcomes yeah. from those devices. So the resolution is a USB 2 friendly resolution, anyways. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, um, and then where you usually put all this traffic is ultimately going to go into a soft codec. Yeah. And Pretty much every soft codec out there on the market today uh, is going to top out at about 720p resolution. Yeah. So even if you could offer it 4K video, yeah, once you start once you start dumping it into a CPU, who's got to move it back and forth to RAM? Yes. Sudden, suddenly managing 4K, 6K, 8K images is yeah. It, you you, you got to have a dedicated P monster PC just to do that processing. Exactly. Forget about checking your email at the same time. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And then if you're offering that conference call, and people on the other side, they're still only going to see 720p anyways. <laughs> yeah. Right? And so it's okay to extend it over a USB 2 okay. infrastructure, okay. right? Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, you touched on bandwidth in there. I think it's important to highlight. USB 2 is consuming around, let's say, 500 megabits per second. It's, sure. it's 480. Um, you know, and, and when we break down an SDVoE connection, we're using 10 gigabits per second for a total data link. Uh, the video of SDVoE may consume up to nine, uh, sometimes less, depending on your resolution. Um, and so you can see, okay, if there's nine gigs for video, that leaves a half a gig for USB, and there's still a half a gig for, you know, other stuff. You compare that though to, to people trying to do AV over IP plus USB on a one gig network, yep. and suddenly, suddenly that half a gig of, of, of USB is is half of their total bandwidth. Yep. Um, and, and things really fall apart. This is why I, I've a, this is why I asked the question before about. Am I going to be limited or can I do the full speed? Because I've seen other 1 gig AV over IP solutions that end up having to constrict their USB bandwidth just to be able to do the yeah. video job. So that's unfortunate. But it does lead me to the, to the next topic, which is, I heard everything you said about USB 2 and how in today's real world, USB 2 is getting the job done. Yeah. Uh, but you know what, fast forward to some kind of future, CPUs get faster, cameras get faster, networks get faster, all that. I'm sure we will be taking advantage, wanting to take advantage of USB 3.0. Right. Um, now we're going to get into a network challenge at some point, right? If, if, if SDVoE is consuming 9 gigs and, and USB 3.0 speeds are is up to 3 gigs or even up to 6 gigs? In Gen 1, uh, it's 5 gigs. It's 5? Five? 5 gigs. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. Now suddenly half of my leg is getting consumed. Uh, by USB. So, so in the long term, we'll see where that goes in terms of network speeds and things. Um, but without without giving away any corporate secrets or anything, are, are Icron looking to a USB 3 over network future? Yes, absolutely. So uh, we do it point to point today. Okay. And uh, on our copper-based solutions, um, we offer 100 meter point to point extension. Um, and it's no coincidence that 100 meters comes from the fact that we're using Ethernet FIs essentially to do oh, that, okay. uh, 10 okay, gigabit Ethernet FIs. Um, so th yeah, the next log logical step is to is to uh, put a stack on that so it can run over a network. And okay. um, sometime next year, you're going to start seeing some products that that Excellent. can. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. And just one. just to, again make sure we're totally clear. Before you talked about long USB cables that will downgrade the signal to USB 2. But what you're doing is Icron's transparent active extension. So we're talking about full USB 3 speeds, full USB 3 connectivity Absolutely. over up to 100 meters. Absolutely. That's, that's quite and, a long And then if it, and since it's LAN, uh, all you really need to worry about is 100 meters to the next switch node. Right. And then there could be another 100 meters on right. the next, so it could be 200, right? Sure. And we can usually Just accommodate you know, a couple of the switch hops. Oh, okay. Um, what we're always concerned about with and battling in USB extension is latency. Right. So we're, we're still talking about uh, USB as a, proto as a communication protocol that was never really designed for extension. So there's not a lot of room. If I, rem to, to if I remember down. right, and I may remember wrong, the original spec called for a 15-foot maximum cable length. Yeah. So the, the <laughs> in the USB 2 world, yeah, you can you can get about you know, three to five meters yeah. out of it. Yeah. And then by the time you hit USB 3, just because of bandwidth, uh, that comes down to 
eventually down to about a one meter length. Okay. And especially if you're talking Type C, where you're you're shooting video through there as well too. Absolutely shorter, shorter cables. So, should we talk about Type C? Uh, I, yeah, sure. I don't get confused about it anymore, but there was a time that people got confused about it. I, what, what, when you talk to people, do they get confused about Type C, or is that behind us? People are growing increasingly more comfortable with Type C. Um, what it can do is not so much a mystery. I think what 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 is a bit of a problem is. Uh, armed a little bit of information, people can assume too much. Yeah. I, say, I see the, that very familiar connector. I know it can do power, it can do USB, it can do video, it can do all these things, so surely it's all there. Yeah. Uh, and you find that, uh, well, no, hey, <laughs> maybe this port only does power. Yeah. Maybe this port only does USB too. Um, it's, it's, it's getting better, but people still need to read those documents a little bit, just to make sure they're getting what they think they're going to get out of it. Um, we have a new point-to-point -point extender, for instance, that does have a Type-C connector on it. And we're getting new phone calls and tech support saying, hi, I can't get my video through this. It's right. like, well, yeah. it doesn't support it. It's just the USB 3 data side of things. Um, but people are getting there. And um, with Type-C, it's it, Type-C itself is not a, a communication protocol. It's a connector definition. So right. Type-C uh, is USB 3C. Uh, it is USB 4. It is Thunderbolt 3. It is also Thunderbolt 4. Mm -hmm. um, but the neat thing uh, going forward is that as these newer uh, standards come out, like USB 4, for instance, uh, they're embracing the legacy in that connector, uh, and there's interoperability, backwards compatibility yeah. with earlier generation products that still use that. that, that it's a well. it's a it's a weird challenge, and this this a topic like this came up in a in a panel discussion I was on yesterday. If you, when we're talking about interoperability, you want interoperability. Um, how do how do I make my point clear there's a challenge when I want that type C connector to be able to do everything I want it to be able to do power and video and data and USB 3 and 4 and Thunderbolt but it can't it can't that 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 connector right there can't necessarily do all of it right and so you end up in that in that place where maybe it can do these things but maybe it can't and now how do you manage that now the alternative would be to just have a different connector for every one of those things, which is which is a worse scenario. <laughs> we right? had that before. <laughs> exactly. So so we're in a good place. It's just it brings with it this challenge of now you have to to find ways to, to educate the user for the user to be more intelligent about about what a particular USB C connector, for example, can do. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's and that's where products uh, such as SDVOE network uh, uh, deployed uh, systems that bring video into the mix, yeah. now there's an opportunity to potentially intercept some of that negotiation that's going on behind the scenes and uh, where it could be like, in a, in, again, in a meeting space, for instance, uh, if there's a screen in the room, why not tell the, the people in the room what that port can do? Yeah. Or the thing that's plugged, plugged into it, what it's prepared to do. Yeah. Um, we, we can get that. You know, that as well, and this, this, is, this is how system integrators add value, right? Yeah. By, by understanding what the system can and can't do, by integrating that knowledge and then and then finding ways to transfer it to the user so they can yeah. have a good experience. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Tavis, is there anything else we should cover? Oh, I think we've, uh, we've covered a lot of ground. <laughs> I think so, too. Well, thank you so much for joining. It was a great conversation for me. And thank you all for watching.